Dream to become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein? Learn physics from Professor Saborno Isaac Bari. the problem today. I thought I was going to have to split it into five lectures, but thank God I didn't have to. So, let's say you're in a building. Of course, I love ladders. So let's say you're in a building and you, uh, you are observing a ladder. The ladder leans on uh, the wall up to four meters tall. The ladder itself is five meters in length, and the ground is three meters in length. So now, how do we find the? Oh yeah, and one more thing: the mass of the ladder is going to be equal to, let's say, twelve kilograms. Be 12 kilograms. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's half my math, but anyways, let's move on. So 12 kilograms, so let's reconstruct everything here. So this is our problem. Now, it may seem hard. Uh, you, it may seem at first like there's not enough information to find, oh, it may seem like there's not enough information given. But indeed there is, indeed there is. Let me show you. So first, let's uh, understand our surroundings. We know that the force of gravity at lowercase c is going to act downwards. The force of the ground is going to act along the ladder. If you're wondering why it's diagonal, it's because there are two forces exerted by the ground. The force of friction and the force of, let's say, hmm, the force of acceleration, hmm, of course. Yeah. And, but let's say that this building does not have any friction. Thank you for being such a good professor. Well, I'm going to call it D for sure. So, sir, sir? Yes. What am I saying? Anyways, what is the language I mean? So, now, now, we would expect this, using the law of geometry, we would expect this triangle to have the same angle as this huge triangle, this three for five triangle.
Can yes, Professor. Uh, this is signed in verse of Philippi. Oh, sorry. Uh, what, what do you need, Professor? The, sign, the inverse of sign of three fifths. Sign inverse three fifths. You mean arc sign of point six? Is that correct? You don't have to say it so fancily. I am just going to supervise it. Okay. So thirty-six point eight six nine degrees. Or I'm, go I'm just going to call it 36.9 degrees for short. So now we can figure out the other angle easily. And this would be 53.1 degrees. So now we know our angles. So now we all we need to find is the pump, and then we'll be all set. What do you mean by deeper? Deeper perpendicular. Uh, or the, uh, the distance in the horizontal direction from the ground is equal to the angle that the pump is in. Yeah. Okay. So now we have the angle that we need to find. So now we know the angle that we need to find. Oh, I thought this was simple. But okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay, I see. So what is D? What does D represent? Just D is for distance, you dumbo. So, D is the perpendicular distance between FG. Oh, you're decomposing FG, but what's your center of rotation? What are you uh, using as your axle? Uh, where FG is acting, so we don't have to deal with FG in our torque equation. So, why are you decomposing FG? Mm, I'm not really decomposing. Okay. I'm just finding the angle, so one by one. D perp. Um, R sine theta, um, this sticks out to me. So R is actually going to be, R is, let's say, yeah, R should be 2.5, right? Times sine 30, 36.5, or 36.9, something like that. Okay, what is sine of 36.9 times 2.5? Sine of? Okay. Sine of what? 36.9. Sine is 36.9. Okay, it's 0.6. Okay, times 2.5. 1.5. Oh, wait, great. That's 1.5 meters. Now, we know that net torque is zero. <laughs> so, um, this uh, episode might actually, may or may not save your life. This unit may or may not save your life because this is what keeps buildings standing. Bridges uh, from falling. So that's going to be equal to 1.5. This actually is quite a simple relationship. If you went through a, a huge hassle. So now have W. Let's see which way of W is heading. It looks like it's heading. Which way is that? Isn't that? Yeah, sure. So, 
FF, of course, is going to pull it the other way, right? Mm -hmm. So that means FF and a W are negative 40. No, but FF is going to pull it counterclockwise. Yeah. Let's just look at it. And FW is going to yep. pull it yep. clockwise. Uh, let's... No, no, Professor, I know. Let's take a bunch of markers to analyze this. Yes. Oh, because wow. I like an analogy. You like an analogy? So... Uh. Okay, so can hold let's say this is our ladder. No, so you can hold it, hold it against the wall. Yeah. So and we already did the other two forces. We know so this. Let's do FW. FW. So FW makes it move which way? Uh, uh that way. Uh, because we see that is counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is negative, right? Mm -hmm. so counterclockwise is negative. Okay, that's it. And now we just plug in. So F is positive minus FW R two perpendicular. And minus FF, right? Mm -hmm. uh, perpendicular R3. So now all we have to do is plug in, right? Mm -hmm. FN perpendicular is simply going to be the perpendicular component of FN, right? Or so we can just take FN and it. Sure, sure. So if this, is, if this is 37, Professor, yeah. what would this be? That's 53. 53, yeah. 53, and so this would be 37 once again, right? So that yes, would be that FN, cool. FN sine of 37, right? Mm -hmm. Times R1. And then we have to do FW perpendicular, right? FW perpendicular. So this would be, what would this angle be? Uh, 53.1. Okay, so 53. So it would just be FW times sine of 53, right? Yes. Wow, we're making a lot of progress. We can also call the G perp, which we found to be 1.5. Oh, I see. Anyway, uh, R2. Uh, let me just put R2 for now. And finally, FF perpendicular is going to be what? Uh, sorry, this is FF That's equal. This okay. is 53, right? Uh, yeah. That would be sine of 53. Uh, if you can't see his tiny handwriting, to zoom it. Yeah. I'm sure you can. So that would just be force of friction sine of? Sine of 53. 53 times R3, right? Yes. Now you want to do the honor of plugging in? Uh, hey, sure. Well, what do we know? We know that FN in... Sorry, FW is equal to FF, right? Yeah, FW is equal to FF. Yes, it is legal to use that. Okay, and we know that they have the same distance from... FW has the same distance from, well, the center, right? Yeah. So, and what is that distance? 2.5? Yeah. How do you know? Because that's halfway up the ladder. If we tilt the ladder and make it the y-axis, then it's a little clearer. Uh, so now I can just add these I'm up, right? Five. So I'm gonna so get. Some sort of smoke <coughs> what is that kind of again? 120. Yeah. Sine 37. No, let's just call 118. Okay, sure. For the estimates. For the number of elements. Minus 5. Sine 53. I'm not going to do a tip thing, so everything's fine. Alright, um, 5 sine 53 times Okay, why don't you go ahead and finish it off. Finish it off. For the good people who are watching. There are some very good people who are watching. Would you like me to calculate this? Actually, you can bring that W to the other side first. Okay, why don't you solve for W, Professor? I think you... to divide that by what professor? Oh, uh, five times 53. So on the top is going to be 71.014. 71.014. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 The wall. Are you sure that's correct? Well, it's from the wall. There's surely going to be a greater force from the gram, right? But the gram is two point component that we already okay, know. So Maybe it's more convenient to solve for the gram. Who the result is the equation? So 17.75 
So 118 squared is 13, 9 to 4. Square root that. No, no, a times, times. Plus. Oh yeah, plus. So let's square root all of this. And we get 119, Professor. Is okay. that correct? This seems to be correct. Are you sure about that, though? I am oh. pretty confident in my choice. Isn't that right? 119, and what would be the unit? Oh, yeah. Yes, units. Uh -huh. Wait, Are you Professor. About this? I'm uh, just a little bit shaky because uh, here we. Uh, I think you, uh, what did we do here? Sine of, uh, say there's 3 over 5, right? Sine theta equals 3 over 5. Okay. I just found the angles, you know. So that means sine of 30 would be 0.5, right? Yeah, sine 30 is 0.5, of course. Unless I was in uh, degrees and not. Yeah, uh, that's... Oh, I was in... Was I in... You were in radians. I was in uh, radians, okay, so... Let me just go ahead and double check that. So five. six. Oh no, it is 37, yeah. So that angle would indeed be 37. Um, but my... my this in degrees. Did you do this in degrees? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to do that again. So I'll have 115, sorry, 118 over 5, which is 23.6. Go ahead and write that down. 20, 23.6 times... 23.6 times sine 37 over sine 53. <coughs> so sine 37 is going to be 0. 0.6. Write 0. 0.6. And sine of 53 is going to be 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8. So 0. 0.6 over 0. 0.8. Times 23.6. That's a pretty that gives me 17.7 once again. So let me just go ahead and double check we did all the mathematics correctly. So we're gonna have <coughs> we're gonna have um, five sine fifty three of w, right? Mm -hmm. But the the fact of the matter is that we have to make sure that all of our components are right. So first and foremost, fn, right? Yeah. So that's gonna be fn sine thirty seven, which is correct. And then we're gonna have oh, I see our mistake. We didn't multiply this by two point five. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So let's go ahead and do that, professor. Mm -hmm. So we did not multiply that by 2.5. So that is not very handy. Okay, so now... Wait, they were multiplying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 17.7 times 2.5 is going to give me 44.25. 17.7 yes! times 2.5. we were the the whole time. Wow, now, Professor. Now plug in this new value of oh. Genius! Genius! Let's plug this new value of victory into our resulting equation. This professor is genius. This professor should be teaching at Harvard, not here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pretty low budget school, to be honest. This Sometime. is a low budget university. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.